What do we say? What do we say? Oh, you got some folk that think they're going to graduate from high school because they got perfect attendance. <laughs> you don't pass no test because you just show up. I got perfect attendance. This job requires a bachelor's of such such, but I have a good personality. I understand that. But this job requires that you pass certain tests and have a certain level of maturity and understanding that you may handle this responsibility. Without that, we can't use you. Right. I, learned, I learned a vital lesson. You can't preach the whole Bible in one night. I, I learned that, and I said, I'll never do that. <laughs> when he said it, I... When he said, I, I, I clowned him. I said, you sure right, because he sure tried to preach all the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Give me Exodus 4, verse 24. Somebody read that for me. 4 and 24. Stop for a second. She's a little upset, isn't she? Okay. This is Moses about to start ministry in disobedience. Now, God spoke to Moses. God saved him from the Nile. God raised him up in all the wisdom of Egypt. And even though he was raised to be Egyptian, he had Hebrew flowing through his blood. And when he seen his brethren being mis being abused and mistreated, what was on the inside of him manifests on the outside of him. He looked to the left, he looked to the right, and he killed an Egyptian. Then he ran as, as a refugee, ran to Midian, where he met his, met his father-in-law and met his wife. And there, for 40 years, he was a shepherd, and he learned to be a priest because Jephro was a high priest. So he learned the ways of Egyptian Egyptian. He was called to be a savior. He learned to be a priest and a shepherd in Midian. So he gets to a place where he sees this marvelous sight. He sees this burning bush, and he communes with God. He takes the sandals off, takes the sandals off for the feet to stand on his holy ground. And God speaks to him, I need you to go back to Egypt for the people who are pursuing you. They are dead. Go back to Egypt and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. I've heard the cries of my people. They've been they cried to me. I heard the cries of their affliction. I heard the cries of my people because of their affliction. And I remember my covenant with them. So anytime there's going to be a mighty movement, I need to raise up a man or a prophet. So Moses, go back where well, you've been thoroughly trained in. You know the language. So you know two different languages. You know the custom. You know people in office. You, I, I fashioned you and I made you for this generation to, to be able to reach this generation and pull them out of the world, put them out of bondage. He begins to make excuses. I can't, I can't, I, 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 I study. Son, you don't study. Y yes, I do. <laughs> Moses, you, you, you make me mad now. <laughs> he said, who, who am I to go speak to the children of Israel? You know, and who should I tell them who your name is? You tell them that I am that I am. You need salvation, I'm that. You need water, I'm that. You need healing, I'm that. You need reconciliation as a people, I'm that. You need healing in your family, I'm that. You need healing in your body, whatever you need, whatever you can think of that's holy, that's righteous, that's wholesome, I'm that. I stutter, get my brother Aaron, about to go forward, and the covenant God cut with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Moses, circumcision. That's the external covenant I established that you my people. This is when Joseph said, when he looked just like an Egyptian. Joseph talked uh, Egyptian language, and their brother said, I'm your, he said, I'm your brother Joseph. No, you're not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. He put out his pants. Yes, you are. <laughs> you're circumcised. Nobody else is circumcised. Yeah, that's Joseph. 
I said, Joseph Chicken. I'm not sure. <laughs> what does circumcision represent? What does circumcision represent? It represents you being in, uh, cut out of the old and is a sign of the new. Yeah. And Romans says that we're no longer circumcised of the flesh, we're circumcised of the heart. So it shows circumcision or purity or salvation of the heart. And he said, Moses, you're saying everything I need you to say. You got certain things in order. But your heart ain't right because the very thing I told you to do pertaining to your covenant, pertaining to the righteousness of your heart, you're ignoring. And you want to embark on ministry knowing your heart ain't right. I kill you first. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What is so beautiful about the story, I'm, I'm going to say this because I'm not going to be, I got a whole bunch of stuff. Hopefully I'll pick it up. Well, I don't know if we have someone else speaking tomorrow. I'll figure it out afterwards. I mean, next Sunday. But. What blessed me is when Moses was tripping, <clears throat> Moses about to make a life and death situation. Refine on the house. I know a Negro to refine on the house to go to go on a cruise. <laughs> I can't make this stuff up. <laughs> you pull equity out of your house to go on a cruise and buy, instead of being a good steward, he pulled equity out of his house, raised the mortgage up to I don't know what, to go on a cruise and buy some clothes and kick it. He made a, he made a financial decision that shipwrecked his family and his destiny. What blesses me is that when Moses was tripping, when Moses lost the better part of his mind, he had a wife that stood proxy and did what Moses was supposed to do to keep the family afloat. Though I flow, some of y'all don't hear me though. A lot of feminists have been raised up because of the abuse yes. of male leadership. Yes. When well, you want to beat on your chest, tell them, you're supposed to do what I say, you ain't supposed to talk in the church, you ain't supposed to preach, but you make all these dumb decisions that shipwreck this family, you don't treat me right, and all that. We need women that know their place and their position in God. Yes. You can be walking authority, you don't need no title, but you can walk in authority. The Bible says in salvation, I think it's in Galatians, that there's no slave, no, no, there are slave, no barbarian, all are free in Christ. You don't need no title to be free in Christ. You ain't got to be apostle, bishop, boogaloo for you to feel like you have authority in the Holy Ghost. Support showed me authority in the Holy Ghost by knowing her position. When her man was out of order, she stepped proxy, took a sharp knife, and did what he was supposed to do, that circumcised their son. In the torment, it is the man's job to circumcise his son, to find him a wife, to teach him a trade, to teach him how to fish. And teach him how to swim. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Moses didn't do what he's supposed to do. Worry about ministry. Knowing mm -hmm. you wrestling with pornography. Mm -hmm. And you want to put yourself in a position to, deal, to minister to a whole bunch of women in ministry? You crazy. Mm -hmm. Knowing you're not settled in your spirit. You have not conditioned yourself. God called Adam <coughs> first. In creation and humanity he used Adam as a foundation to lay down for humanity you have to dig down deep to pour a foundation a foundation the concrete has to be cured before you can build on it the concrete has to mature before you can build on it uh, before you lay a foundation you have to calculate the weight that a foundation can hold. Before, when he made the blueprints, he had to calculate, if I'm gonna make a three-story house, I have to calculate how deep I have to make this foundation for it to hold the weight of the structure. Because a man is designed to hold the weight of the family. He gave you testosterone and muscles that you may work harder to provide. He gave you a one-track mind so you can handle the pressures of life. He didn't give, he took away the most vital thing that you, and that's your emotions, and made a woman. This is how men go to war, kill everything that's moving, come home and eat biscuits and make love. 
Yeah. <laughs> women doing this. I killed a, I killed a baby. I killed a man. Oh my God. And when they get a, and, and when women get hard, ooh, Mufasa. <laughs> When women get hard or when men get feminine, you got the strength of a man and the viciousness of a woman. It was that one dude that uh, got the uh, 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 transgender, the black guy that's in the mixed martial arts, he's in the MMA. He knocking women's uh, uh, eye sockets out their head. Talking about, well, actually, because uh, I don't know his name. Man, he's beating the life out of these. He cheated. He's a man that had this. Uh, the transgender had the surgery, yeah. mm -hmm. and he got into mixed martial arts on the women's yes. side, and he knocking folks spinal cords loose. <laughs> <laughs> he talking about really, I'm at a disadvantage because I have to take, <laughs> I have to take uh, estrogen to be a woman, so I'm losing testosterone. You ain't whatever, dude. He knocked the woman's eye socket loose. <laughs> Being out of order. When a man gets out of order, the house is divided. They say that when a man is in the house, they attribute the, they, in statistics that the, the children are more educated, they prosper, they're, uh, 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 they're more disciplined and subject to authority. When he is out of the home, they attribute that to poverty, mental illness, incarceration, disorderly, all these things. When something is out of order, it births disorder. And before you start a ministry, Moses, out of order and ruin a whole generation, I kill you first. Because you're my man. Other folks will call themselves, and I let them do what they want to do. But when you call to God, nowhere you can run. Hallelujah. Nowhere you can, Jonah, you can go on a boat. Right. You can go to the Philistines. You can go wherever you want to go. God going to find you because he has predestined you for a purpose and a destiny. And you will have no rest right. until you fulfill what he's called you to do. If there's going to be restoration home, it's going to start with the men. Yeah. Yep. Knowing their position, knowing their identity. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I get worried. I get worried when I see men who are designed to be worshippers. Yeah. 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 There's nothing feminine about worshiping and magnifying God. Yeah. The Bible says your father is your source. He's your sustainer. When I get what I need from my source, I can become a resource to my family. When I plug in my phone, now I, now everyone has access to it. But if I run out of if I run out of power, can't nobody use the vessel. So when I'm connected to the source, I become a resource to my family, to my community, to my country. He made a decree to kill all the men because that's the order in creation. If I cut off the head, I got a young lady that's going to come and minister. And she's going to start out with why the guillotine was made. Because when you cut off the head, the body dies. So if you want to be effective and efficient in warfare, I don't want to, I don't want to with no giraffe, get my jaw broke. I don't want no effort. I want the most efficient, effective way to get the job done. If I cut off the head, the body will die. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. You got men in here who won't lift their hands. And I'm supposed to believe that you that you that you are at right standards with God. I don't believe you. I can look at your fruits and see that you're defeated. And you give all your energy and your creativity to the world, to the lust of the flesh, and then when it comes to God, you're bankrupt. You don't have forever to do that, beloved. You don't have forever to come in here and be done on purpose. They got some junk out here in this world that you don't even have a clue, that you ain't even ready for, that you can't even get the ask for, that you look, you get swept like a tidal wave because you didn't spend this time. You in a blessed place. When the teacher was teaching, you on your phone. 
you in cyberspace in the, in, in the thoughts of your mind. And then when the test come, you wonder why. What do we say, Blakes? What do we say? What do we say? Oh, you got some folk that think they're going to graduate from high school because they got perfect attendance. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. You don't pass no test because you just show up. Nope. <laughs> I got a perfect attendance. So this job requires a bachelor's of success, but I have a good personality. But I understand that. But this job requires that you pass certain tests and have a certain level of maturity and understanding that you may handle this responsibility. Without that, we can't use you. Right. Mm. In my closing. I just, I just vexed myself in my clothes. <laughs> my heart, for real, my heart is bleeding at, at the simple. Oh, you yes. simple ones, how long will you love simplicity? Yes. My heart is bleeding because we yes. deceive ourselves that we are right standards with God because we're doing stuff for him yep. and not doing what he said. Right. Yeah. We exchange what he required of us it's more than I require of thee. We exchange what he requires for us for sacrifice. God does not desire sacrifice. He desires obedience. You condition your heart for obedience through walking with him, communing with him, worshiping him. The more I'm intimate and close with my wife, the more my mind is to fulfill her will. On the SUV, on the SUV. In my mind, we're gonna save this money. We're gonna save this money. SUV, save, SUV, save, SUV, save. She do a few things I ask her to do, smile, say a few things, make me feel all happy and goofy. I'm like, I'm the wish I'm looking for SUV for my life. No wife, SUV. She do that little thing where you fold your clothes with your toes, I'm gonna get SUV. I'm gonna find this woman the SUV. <laughs> Heart has to be towards God for what He has called us to be.